fine. Leave. See if I care. I'll do the show on my own. So Shalamanan, he did this movie called The Village, and they're in this village, and Joaquin Phoenix is like, we gotta be in the village. We can't go out there. Okay, here we go. Shall we? So another movie. <laughs> Mother of God. No one wants to hear about The Village. You know what? I'm gonna talk about something else. Fuck it. Hey there, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another special episode of Back to the Podcast. We are your hosts, Justin Neal and Chris Lawler. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the opportunity. And of course, you can always hit that bell to be notified whenever we drop fresh content. Today, I think we're going to be having some fun. Justin, it's always fun to sit down and talk movies with you. How are you doing today? And of course, what did you watch this week? Man, it is super hot. I am ready for summer to be done. I'm ready for school. I'm ready for autumn. I am ready for Harry Potter. Man. How are you? I'm good. I'm not ready for summer to be over we live in two different climates but it's only just feeling like summer here really so i'm only just now getting out and enjoying it but i guess the kiddos are about to go back to school and that's what you're looking for a small reprieve throughout the day something like that well did you sit down with the kids and watch anything fun see anything for yourself how about you and the wife is there anything that we should be seeing went to some oldies but goodies this last weekend i did the tolkien 12 right it was fantastic i was working on the new episode and some other things and i just had it going in the background but i also ran errands I went out and did a hike while they were like trudging through the two towers. The movies continue whether or not I was there. Like I did it properly, even though I was by myself. <laughs> and then the other night I watched Pirate Radio, okay. which is a great comfort food, great soundtrack. We've talked about soundtracks before. Right on. What about you? Did you watch anything? Yeah. Is Pirate Radio worth a watch? Yeah, absolutely. I've never seen that one. Oh yeah. You should totally check it out. It's a British invasion. Okay. Rebel with a cause. Based on a true story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Britain in the 60s. Kenneth Branagh, Bill Nye, Nick Frost. Oh. oh my God, the ensemble cast is amazing. Okay. It's never ending if you look at it online. So Richard Curtis uh, wrote and directed mm. it. He's more known for like Four Weddings and a Funeral and Notting Hill and Love Actually. Okay. And then he, you know, wrote and directed this little side. It's not a side project, but. In continuation of his career. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> his next movie, he did a, uh, a British Invasion movie and I like that a lot. I like that music and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And that was like, what was that? They couldn't play like American rock and roll or something like no, that? No, any rock and roll. Any rock and roll. And you guys should check it out if you haven't seen it. Okay. Uh, have you watched anything new? Yes, I did. I'm getting caught up, so it's not like this is going to be some big surprise, but we did finally get to sit down and watch the new Spider-Man movie, and um, wow, it almost surpassed the original. You still haven't seen these, have you? No, but it's on the list. In fact, I almost watched uh, the first one last night, so maybe I will tonight. It's worth the watch, man. You need to just put it aside that this is Spider-Man movie and how there's like all this comic book stuff out there and realize that something great is actually happening right there. Okay. Like they knocked it out of the park. Like it was such a, an incredible film, not only with what they did with the animation, the voice acting is top notch. Uh, Shameik Moore is obviously playing Miles Morales, who's that dude that I think is just super talented. And I think he's got a bright future ahead of him i would love to remake the warriors with him in the lead like we've talked about before on the show yeah we were halfway through the sequel and i was like this is going so well and i'm having so much fun i really hope that they plan to make a third one and i guess spoilers but they leave it with a cliffhanger that there is going to be a part three. Oh, good i left very happy because even though they do that a lot right now in hollywood where it's like oh we gotta we gotta split up the ending to like drag it out this one felt earned and deserved authentic and the storytelling in this one oh, oh man i got goosebumps watching this movie oh good we immediately watched it again the next really? day really there's so much happening and so much detail that's rare it is an incredible movie 10 out of 10 okay highly recommend okay your kids are gonna love it you've poked me into it okay. but you're gonna love it even better i mean once again this is kind of what we were breaching on a little bit last week with super mario brothers that's why i was a little disappointed with that movie because so many times they put out movies that can be great cross-generational films that adults and kids can like. And when you go to a movie expecting like, hey, I know this is like made for kids, but there's going to be stuff in here for me. Super Mario Brothers didn't have that, you know? But the Spider-Man ones that they've been doing, like Phil Lord and... 
I can't think of the other guy's name that are making these. Did the Lego movies and stuff? They're- are they? They also did Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah, the remake with Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum, which is way that was one of their bigger ones. Funnier, yeah. than it has any right to be. Yeah, that movie's hilarious. I haven't seen Twenty Two. I think I remember seeing Twenty One Jump Street. Really enjoying that. Obviously, there's a lot of great comedians and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Ice Cube, very funny as well. But man, Into the Spider Verse, whichever one this one's called, I can't remember now. Both of them, totally worth the watch. Totally worth the buy. Like. Like, these are things that you should have in your collection. As works of art. They are works of art. Sure, I get that. You're going to love the writing. You're going to love the directing. I really think you're going to appreciate this movie, which leads us into, you know, movies that surprise us for sure. This one was one of the movies that surprised me. Just like you, I didn't think much of it. They weren't doing much of a hype train. Yeah, there wasn't a huge amount of promo. No one, like, really talks about it when it came to the theater. It felt like it came and went. And then it was on streaming. So I was like, ah... I got nothing else to watch. I'll throw this on. Mm -hmm. Mind blown. That was a great movie that just showed up. Once again, it was a Sony production, so no one was really paying much attention to it because they haven't done much with the properties that they've had within the Spider-Verse and stuff like that. I mean, that's my opinion, but (laughs) going by some of the scores that I've seen on Rotten Tomatoes. And then when I sat down and watched the first one, blown away, was very excited for this one, disappointed I didn't get a chance to see it in the theater. I hope you are just as surprised about it. With that being said, that was about it. We watched Stranger Things season four. Okay. I know I'm like way behind on that, but I am thoroughly enjoying it. We're on like episode five right now and I'm having a great time. I think this season is top notch. Writing is really good. Great character development going on. A lot of Wes Craven vibes in the directing, camera movements and stuff like that. Even in the makeup really for or the yeah. antagonist, right? The monster, mm-hmm. isn't that got some Wes Craven? I feel like there's some like new nightmare sort of totally like makeup in the face going on a little bit, don't you think? Yeah. And then, of course, having Robert England actually make a cameo is pretty cool. That's right. In this uh, season. It's like, oh, hey. Look, it's Freddy. We didn't expect much when Stranger Things season one came out, right? This is like one of the first like phenomenons yeah. that showed up on streaming where it was like, you have to get Netflix just to watch this show. It's worth it. It was, yeah. Really need to see it, especially if you're into horror, especially if you're into Stephen King. I love that it's like it's very Stephen King. broad and specific at the same time with their homages, you know? Well, it's kind of Stephen King meets Steven Spielberg. Yeah. So you've got that 80s nostalgia vibe that Spielberg really helped define starting in the late 70s with E.T. Close encounters. Yeah, exactly. And so that definitely fed into the 80s. And so that's what they're really tapping into, the creators of Stranger Things. And it's the same thing that J.J. Abrams was tapping into when he did Super 8. Yeah. And it was a really good mashup of influences. Oh, yeah. Where the sum of the parts became more... Wait, how does that phrase go? I don't know. (laughs) Where it becomes more than the sum. It became more than the sum of its parts. You're on your own. (laughs) Yeah, something like that. I can't help you. (laughs) Anyway, Stranger Things. You started digging that hole on your own. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. But Stranger Things is fantastic. We're big fans of it around here, especially that first season. I mean, it sounds like it wasn't much, but, you know, to binge an over hour episode of Stranger Things does take time. Yeah, it does. I wanted to get back into it, and I was like, oh, that's right. We need to get caught up with the phenomenon that was season four, because it was hard not to get a little tidbits spoiled because everybody was talking about every episode as it came out so yeah but yeah let's dive into some nostalgia man do you have any memories back further of like movies that you weren't like really looking forward to or maybe you hadn't even heard of it and like a friend showed it to you on dvd and you were like pleasantly surprised by how much fun that movie was and now it's like one of your favorites oh i definitely have several of those but one of the biggest ones was actually referred to me by my sister Mm -hmm. and it became one of my favorite movies but i was sick and i asked my older sister if she had any recommendations and she recommended it and I remember the first time I watched it like I just bawled through the second half of the movie what could this be and that's Moulin Rouge Moulin Rouge I was not expecting to like Moulin Rouge as much as I did I can accept that answer I was the same way but please continue man what made you cry through the whole second half it's a tragedy I mean I know it's tragic I love tragedies well so is Romeo and Juliet oh Justin you're a big old softy there's a tragedy (laughs) in me some wait that sounds bad no I'm gonna write a tragedy one day that's what I meant yeah I knew Baz from Romeo 
Romeo and Juliet, of course, with Claire Danes right, and Leo, because right. um, that came out when I was high sc- early in high school. Yeah, we were in high school. It was the same time, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I remember they wouldn't let us see that because of the uber violence, but we had to watch the 70s version that had nudity. Underage nudity. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't make any sense to me. The Zeffirelli film. So I think we watched that one in lit class, and then we watched Baz's in drama. Two different teachers. Yeah. And it makes sense when you break it up like that. Uh, yeah. So I knew who Baz was. Yeah. And of course, I knew Ewan McGregor because Train Spotting. Oh, I love Train Spotting. And I knew yeah. Nicole Kidman because of Days of Thunder. And oh, yeah, I mean, she was Nicole Kidman. Eyes wide shut at that point. Right. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I just wasn't interested in seeing it in the theater. But on my sister's recommendation, I rented it and yeah. absolutely fell in love with that movie. And I have seen it so many times. I know all the music. Yeah. I am one of those like guys that absolutely fell in love. I'm with you. Exactly. Yeah. So even in my study abroad in the UK in the summer of 03, the movie had already been out for a couple of years. But because I was taking a Shakespeare class, word got around that Justin um, likes... Uh, Justin likes girly movies. At that time, that's exactly what it Justin was. Justin likes girly movies. And so... That's hilarious. You know, Moulin Rouge <laughs> came up. I said I was a big fan of that. Someone found it playing at the Prince Charles Theater in central London. And it's just an old yeah. theater full of character. Then I met some people on my study abroad down at the theater and we watched Moulin Rouge. Oh. It was really cool to see it in the theater because it was actually a really different experience seeing it with a pack house than it was yeah. all those years wa- watching it in my room by myself. <laughs> Don't let anybody see me do this. <laughs> like it's really different and there were a couple of parts that I didn't think were especially funny but the whole room laughed yeah, yeah, yeah. when I watched it in the theater and it was a lot funnier right. seeing it with people in those specific moments so it was kind of cool in that way to get a different perspective on something that I knew so well I, I'm actually jealous because I've only seen it on Mm-hmm. home TV screens. And I bet that would be a fun one, especially with an audience, right? It's wild. Yeah, I bet. And because it wasn't brand new, everyone who was there fucking wanted to be there because they yeah. love that movie. Almost like going to see like a Rocky Horror Picture Show. Exactly. No one was there just by happenstance. Yeah, yeah. So they really got into it. Yeah, yeah. I was walking down the street and I followed this guy in a brown coat into this building and here I am. So <laughs> So it was a totally different thing seeing it with a theater full of fans. That's awesome. I will always hold on to that experience because it was fantastic for me. That's really cool. I had a, a, at least a decent experience seeing it for the first time. I was at some uh, girl's apartment that I was kind of crushing on and she lived there with her girlfriends. We got to talking about film, but then they lit up and we're like, you've never seen Moulin Rouge. Oh my God. Do you like musicals? And I was like, yeah, I like musicals mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Trying to be a little too much for a room for, full of girls. I should have just. I fucking love music. Yeah, I know. I was trying to I was trying a little too hard. I was young, man. I was young. But anyway, they they popped it in and I ended up sitting down and watching this movie with these three girls that I really didn't know that well and I had a blast with it because they were just they were overjoyed that I was finding joy in that, right? Like they were able to like bring me over to the dark side or something like that. Because it was off type yeah. in theory for what you would like. Yeah. I love those. I love those movies movies that surprise us because we weren't expecting them. But anyway, I love that movie. I was totally surprised. It's been a part of my soul ever since. I haven't watched it in a while just because, you know, I've kind of moved on moved on from that time and place in my life where I want to sit down with two bottles of red wine and watch Moulin Rouge. (laughs) But, you know, I will always remember it. Those were, I can't say they were good times, but they were, you know, they were real. They were times. They were authentic. (laughs) Because that's part of life is like, there's going to be shitty times. And a lot of the great things in our life come from... From saying yes. What you did was you said yes to an experience, right? I used to say, just say maybe (laughs) to people who would say no all the time. I'm like, no, no, don't say no. Just say maybe. They're like, do you want to do that? No, maybe. I had 27 people. RSVP is maybe. How do you plan a party for maybe? But those turn into the best parties. It was a quote. 
and it just went right over your head. Oh, it was just a quote from a show. <laughs> what was it? Bob's Burgers. Oh, okay. You're not as familiar with. Bob's. I do like Bob's Burgers a lot. I just don't know that quote. Oh, their mechanic friend. He threw a Halloween party. <gasps> oh, okay, that makes sense. And and, and he got upset, hey, Bob, because everyone RSVP'd maybe Bob, <laughs> and he freaked out. Bob, sorry, that was totally off the cuff. You should know better, though. I should. You should do better. I love H. John Benjamin. Me too. I love Archer. Well, is one of my favorite shows. And then I mean, I grew up with him with uh, uh, John has a van. No. Did you ever see that sketch comedy show on MTV? No. It was like H. John Benjamin has a van. Oh, I'm looking that up. And it was like a street sketch comedy thing. It didn't last long at all. It wasn't like great, but. I love his voice. Before Archer, right? He did the voice for the can. He did. On What Hot American Summer or whatever. I notice him now. He's also in 22 Jump Street. Yeah. He shows up as the football coach in college. Yeah, yeah. Yes, H. John Benjamin. No, I think he's hilarious. I've been following him for a while now. Sure. I think that's probably where they found like Ian Black and all those guys because they were also making a new MTV show it seemed like every week okay. that was getting canceled the week after and it was like I enjoyed that why is it gone now because no one else did no one else did I'm just the obscure kid but what would be a surprise for you you know what movie surprised the hell out of me that I enjoyed way too much that I thought was not going to be for me was Clueless. <laughs> when that came out, they were hyping Paul that, Rudd. Yeah. Well, he wasn't part of the advertising at the time, right? No, it, not at all. Like the ads, I don't think really did the movie justice. No, they really didn't. For how funny it was. They were aimed at the lowest common denominator, if I remember correctly. And it felt like it was definitely aimed towards girls, which it's not like... No, that's not what I meant by lowest common denominator. No, God, no, that's not what I meant either. But it did feel like the marketing behind it was pushing it towards young teenage females, which is definitely the demographic I could see that movie hitting with. But then I went and saw that movie and was like, man, this is really funny. Like, this is just a good high school comedy. And really what they're making fun of is just the California and the Hollywood, um, you know, area and stuff like that. So I just lost my light. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I thought my monitor like was going into sleep mode. Car. 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 Uh, so I don't know how you're going to salvage all that. Game on. Game on. Game on. So another movie that really surprised me. Okay, going back, you know, The Sixth Sense became a huge hit, right? Wasn't that like a runaway success, The Sixth yeah. Sense? It grossed like a billion dollars, like worldwide or something like that? I don't remember. I just remember everyone saw it. Ridiculous hit. Everyone was talking about it. Right, right, right. It was a big thing. So then Unbreakable came out and no one liked it. Was not as popular. Except for a few of us, and I think you're one of those people. Yeah, I liked it though. So when The Village came out, they were really selling it from the creators of The Sixth Sense. Yeah. From the twist of the sixth sense comes the village. It was really, really hyped up as a big twist. It's a movie that exists to give you the twist. But when I saw it in the theater, that wasn't the movie I was watching. I was watching a love story. What? Okay. And it's between Joaquin Phoenix and Bryce Dallas Howard. And if you watch it as a love story, okay. it's beautiful. And then it just happens to have this sort of side plot about the creatures in the forest and blah, blah, blah. But to me, that's just noise. It's about Joaquin Phoenix and Bryce Dallas Howard. Okay. And it is so good. I've actually never seen The Village because it was so ruined when it came out. Everyone spoiled that ending. So don't even watch it for that because okay. even when the twist is revealed, that's not what's happening. What Bryce Dallas Howard is doing is not about the monsters or the twist. Like, that's not really what this story is. That's just a challenge that they need to overcome. But that's not the point. But it's a love story. The point is about their relationship. Yeah. And I think it is a beautiful love story. Wow. I've never heard anybody describe it that way. But it was misrepresented. Well, I mean, isn't that the downfall of Shyamalan movies is that they go from the guy that made the sixth sense. Mm -hmm. So they immediately plant it in your head. Hey, you're going to experience the same thing you experienced when you saw Sixth Sense. And if it's not better, you're going to be disappointed. And you will, because we just set that expectation. And that's impossible. That's what people need, though, to get their butts in the seats. To be like, Name recognition. Yeah, I have not seen The Village, though. I've I've seen the majority of his movies, but that one slipped through the cracks for me. Unbreakable is right behind it, though. I really like Unbreakable. Interesting. Lady in the Water became one of my favorites, actually. Really? Uh-huh. I thought that was interesting. Okay. It's another one of those that you're rewarded on multiple viewings. I've only seen it that once, and I remember sitting in the theater going like, 
like which is also like a downfall don't get me wrong like as much as i love nolan films because you are yeah. rewarded on repeat watches and stuff like that some of the more casual moviegoers may not get to enjoy it as much I don't know. Maybe that movie is made for moviegoers like us that are going to want to watch this on repeat. I need to watch it again. Maybe the casual moviegoer isn't going to just experience this great story from beginning to end because of the way they write. What's another one that surprised you that you weren't expecting? There's a lot of movies. It's always nice to be pleasantly surprised. But sometimes I like to have a complete surprise. Just be completely taken aback by what's happening on screen. Yeah. And Cabin in the Woods was one of those movies that showed up. Joss Whedon, right? Joss Whedon. And then, you know, it starred Thor, right? Chris Hemsworth. We didn't really know much about Hemsworth at the time. No, not at the time, yeah. Anyway, with that being said, we turned on this movie. I was, you know, the wife loves horror. Mm -hmm. It was an easy sell to be like, hey, let's watch this Cabin in the Woods movie. <laughs> Sold. So we threw it on. And I thought I had the wrong movie in because it starts out with those two other guys at work having this really weird casual by the water cooler conversation. Mm -hmm. Two favorite actors of mine. What is that? Richard Jenkins. I and like him in the Coen Brothers Burn After Reading. Oh, absolutely. Brad Whitford. Bradley yeah. Whitford. Okay. That's right. Bradley Whitford from. From so many things. West Wing. Well, the West Wing. <laughs> Adventures in Babysitting. For me, it's Billy Madison. He plays the villain oh, in okay. Billy Madison. So that's really. Uh, Brad. If you're listening, I, I don't mean to disrespect your amazing, illustrious career with just going back to Billy Madison, but you were so fucking funny in that movie, and I've loved you in so many other things since. But in uh, Cabin in the Woods, yeah, Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford just show up, and they're just having this conversation like they're at a job, and they're driving around. I'm, If you remember that intro, it's just so mm -hmm. jarring. And they're driving along, and nothing happens, and then bam, Cabin in the Woods title shows up. And you're like, okay, so I am watching the right movie, but what the yeah. hell is going on right What's now? On? And I love how it just slowly kind of unravels. They have fun with the genre. It was a good movie, you know? And then, of course, the Sigourney Weaver cameo at the end was like, what is going on with this? Joss Whedon, another movie that surprised me of his was Serenity, oh, which we've talked about before. I can totally agree with you on that. But in that summer of 2006. I just thought it was a cool DVD cover. And I went to the theater. You and, did? What is this? This is fantastic. Wow. Remember, I've told you this, how I sat in the theater. I didn't know anything about it. And it was that long shot through the ship. Yeah, the intro. And I was sitting in a theater by myself and I remember thinking like, okay, I'm in good hands here. Like, I don't know what this is, but this is awesome. I always love uh, Jane in the background talking about his grenades. Cam says he yeah. can't take any. Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah, love yeah. that. Oh, it sure would be nice if we had some grenades, don't you think? He was one of the asshole camp counselors in a mid 80s Michael J. Fox movie called Poison Ivy. Okay. Do you remember that? I'm not familiar with Michael J. Fox Poison Ivy movie, no. Okay, it was I mean, you're talking about Adam Baldwin just to bring you up to speed. Sorry, yes, we're talking about Adam Baldwin. He's not a Baldwin brother, just to clarify. He's just- He's the non-brother Baldwin, yeah. Got that name. It was the same year that Back to the Future came out. What? But it came out before Back to the Future. Okay. So he wasn't like Michael J. Fox yet. Right. Anyway, summer camp movie it's not a spoof it's an actual it's like what wet hot american summer is parodying okay is yeah. poison ivy <laughs> that's funny that that's what you would go back to because most people remember him as the uh, military officer from independence day he had a, a couple of good speaking roles and some pretty like a lot of on-camera time for that movie God, everyone's in that movie all right man that's what I got. That's what I got. It's a hodgepodge, but that's okay. They can't all be perfect. They can't all be perfect. It doesn't matter. I came here to talk about films, and I came here, and I succeeded. So please, comment down below. Let us know. What are those movies that you weren't really expecting much from, didn't even hear of, went and saw, and became an instant favorite of yours? Let us know in the comments below. Join the conversation over at the Facebook group at uh, Back to the Podcast Discussion. We're having a lot of fun over there. The community is growing. I'm happy to see that. Um, so please turn up. Let us know what you want to see. Let us know your favorite stuff. Let us know how we can make the show better because we want to make sure that it is geared right to you, our direct audience. So thank you so much again for joining us. Justin, thank you so much as well for hanging out with me again today. And of course, we'll see you guys next time on another episode of Back to the Podcast. Everyone have a good day.